Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. It's Kate Richberg, and it is that time. It is Wednesday, and time for Bead Shop Live. That's right, our favorite day of the week around here, and I hope it is a favorite of yours as well. I'm going to make sure that I can see everybody on our social and then I will bring up the feed and we will be ready to create together here at the bead table. So let's see, let me make sure I can see all of you all here on, um, on our social media. If you can see me over on our Facebook feed, you guys, just give me a shout out. Uh, to make sure that I can see you over here. There we go, I see it. And I think I can see you guys over on the YouTube. So let me make sure I am all ready to go. And people, yep, I see you guys, perfect. Hello everyone, alrighty. Let me pull it right over to, to me. And here we are in three, two, and one. It's great to have everybody here on this Wednesday morning. I hope everybody's feeling good. I hope everybody's healthy and happy and ready to be creative. Um, I know that I am. I'm really excited to share this with you today. I can see everybody jumping on our social here. I've got a bunch of people over on our Facebook feed watching and our wonderful Gita who is um, moderating over on our uh, Facebook feed and our wonderful Janice uh, who is moderating over on our YouTube channel. So thank you guys so much. Uh, Gita is over on Facebook. Uh, she moderates over at beadshop as beadshop.com. So it's great to have, great to have her um, here. As always, Gita, we could not do it without you. Um, Janice is saying, I look so French. Well, bonjour, everyone, bonjour. So uh, it's great to have everyone from all over the world today. And it looks like uh, you guys are all jumping on. I am excited to share this, um, this piece that we've got going on for you guys today. I'm gonna click over to the um, products that we're gonna be using and you guys can kind of see what is, what's shaking over here. This is a project, you know, um, Memory Wire is near and dear to my heart. And I don't know if all of you all well uh, remember, kind of back in the day when Memory Wire came out, it was kind of, I don't know, it was kind of tough. It was kind of like a slinky, really, literally like a slinky. Um, and so it was kind of hard to cut and kind of hard to deal with. But with the new Memory Wire that has been out for a while, it comes in colors. We have it in the copper. You can see it kind of there in the middle of that little bead dish. Um, and so it's a lot nicer and stuff to work with. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about how I work with it, etc. So um, I've got a whole bunch of stuff over here. And let me know, you guys, I played around with the lighting. <laughs> you guys should wait till, uh, Allie, wait till you come and do Facebook with me again, Allie or Krista. <laughs> You're going to be like, wait a minute, what? There are more lights in here? So hopefully it's a little brighter for you guys. I played around with that. So I hope that it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. So you can see over here, I've got some fun stuff for us to play with today. And um, again, I'm gonna click back over here. All of this list, the quantity needed, et cetera, all the, all the ingredients are listed over on our website at beadshop.com, of course. And it's all over here. I, I stacked it up over here. So um, before I get into that, I, uh, and I'll let you guys look at this beauty of beads right there. Um, I did want to say thank you so, so much for your support of our little show here on YouTube. Um, we really, really appreciate your comments, your likes, your hearts. Um, all of that helps us get to um, uh, get us higher in the 
uh, ratings here on YouTube and on Facebook. And the higher we get in the ratings, the more this video goes out. Um, and so our little uh, woman-owned business would not be here without you guys. So thank you so much for um, for your support and your shares and your likes. It means the world to me and to all of our wonderful staff here at beadshop.com. So thank you so much. Um, I also wanted to mention everything that you see here in front of you, uh, in front of uh, and in front of me that I'm going to be using, you can jump over to beadshop.com and click on, it's on the homepage right now. I'm live on March 4th. If you're missing this or if you're seeing this afterwards, you can uh, just go to um, the top bar on our website, beadshop.com. You can click on projects, and this one will be in bracelets, along with all of these other fantastic projects that we've done with Memory Wire. And, you know, this morning, you know, I get my best ideas in the shower. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that when I stand in the shower this in the mornings, on Friday mornings and, and Wednesday mornings, I start to craft the show in my head, right? And kind of think about it and, and um, think about what, you know, the teachable moments are for this, piece, for this piece that I'm gonna present. And so I'm gonna share some other things with you today about Memory Wire. And this was a piece, this one that I'm holding here and this guy over here and Janice and Gita, your fingers, better be ready to do some linking um, because I can't remember the names of these. I'm sorry. I, I have so many things in my head right now. But if you go under on Bead Shop, if you go to the Memory Wire projects, everything is listed. And Janice did these two really cool designs and she incorporated some macrame into these. So I, I, I want to share a little bit about that macrame as well because um, and I'll talk a little bit about my ideas about the designing of this piece. The piece, the cuff, the finished piece, you guys, has not been made yet. So I'm going to design it right here on air and we're going to talk about design and stuff like that. Um, and Maureen, what you're saying, you know, uh, you must have been reading my mind because I'm going to show you this one, Maureen. Uh, this one is also on memory wire. We carry the memory wire in two different sizes. We carry it in the regular two inch diameter, but we also carry it, I think it's a two and a quarter or a two and a half inch diameter. So if you have a larger wrist, this is the memory wire you want, okay? As well as, so my wrist, I'll show you, let me go over here to this camera so you guys can see it, okay? So this one uh, here, my wrist is six and a half inches, okay? So I'll show you how they fit. This one is the larger one. So I'm going to wrap this around and someone will, um, two and a quarter. Thanks, JP. This is the two and a quarter inch. So if you like your memory wire to, um, act a little more like a bangle. Okay. This is how it fits. So it has a lot of room underneath. Okay. And what I also did on here is, can you see how these beads are a little bit bigger, right? If the beads are a little smaller, this one is on the two inch diameter. If the beads are a little smaller, they're going to fit a little tighter. But if you use larger beads on the larger memory wire, you're going to have a little more room. I mean, I can get my finger all the way underneath here, right? And again, my wrist is six and a half inches. So there's plenty of room here for this to have movement. I like my memory wire bracelets to fit a little bit tighter. So this is one that Janice did and she used all the coils. This is the two inch um, uh, diameter. So I'm just going to wrap it around and you're wrapping forever because it's a long one. Okay. Um, you don't have to have this many wraps as well, right? Because if it's too uncomfortable for you as I wrap and I wrap and I wrap, right? So you could cut this up into several um, smaller chunks and then stack them. You could do that too, okay? And so this one, it's kind of like a, I don't know, I feel like I'm a Wonder Woman, my battle cuff or whatever, it's kind of cool. So, um, and Janice is also mentioning, we also have the memory wire in an oval, 
okay? And the oval uh, also fits really nicely as well. It kind of fits like a cuff. You guys are mentioning the cuff I was wearing. It's kind of an oval, so it's, you know, it's a little wider at the wide part of your wrist and a little narrower at the narrow part of your wrist. So that works too. So memory wire, um, if you haven't tried it or you've forgotten about it, it's a great, I think it's a great summer, spring into summer piece. And it's fast to string up. Now if you don't, and you know what, this one actually might be the bigger one. It feels like it's bigger. I made this so long ago. I made this on a free tip Friday with Janice's family reunion mix. It feels a little bigger actually to me. I think it is actually. Let me wrap it around. Um, and this was just her family reunion monthly mix. Yeah, this has to be the bigger one because it's not fitting as close. And again, see with the smaller beads, see my finger under there? It gives me some room, okay? So you can, um, you know, cut these down so it's a shorter, it's a shorter wrap. Um, or if memory wire isn't your bag, that's fine. Just string this on soft flex. You know, the same idea, obviously you're going to have to put a clasp on it, but if it's a long necklace like Softflex, you can just wrap it around, wrap it around, wear it as a bracelet, wrap it around, wear it as a necklace, whatever. So if memory wire isn't your bag, that's cool. Don't sweat it. Just string it on something else. But I love it. My mom is watching over on the um, YouTube feed, and my mom will remember, you know, my grand had a lot of vintage jewelry, and um, it's very, memory wire was used a lot in those cuffs. I don't know if you guys remember this, but there were cuffs that were strung all together like this on the wire, and you just put them right on your wrist. Um, I made one a while back with the, um, <coughs> pardon me, with the carrier beads, and it was kind of fun, a kind of fun vintage uh, thing. I did it on a, on a free tip Friday. But it's very, very, very vintage. Sorry, you might have heard me slurp my coffee. <laughs> sorry about that. I needed a bracing drink of coffee, so um, sorry if I was slurping in your ear. Um, this is the other one that Janice did with the Padres, the natural Padres, which I just adore. I This has such a beautiful kind of beachy feel to it or a boho feel. I'm gonna get a little closer so you guys can see it. The lighting is a lot better, I think right? Just a little bit. I don't know what took me so long to do this. So, but Janice told me last week, she said, you are not going on until you fix those lights. So I did. So JP, for once in my life, I actually listened to you. So it does look a lot better. So I hope you guys um, can see it a little bit better. Um, so again, these are all on memory wire, um, all very versatile, um, all also very fast to make, okay? So when I started thinking about the design of this piece, and I'll click over this camera so you guys can see this, I wanna talk a little bit about the, the pieces I chose. Um, you know, we've been a little bit busy here. We've gotten some new staff members at beadshop.com and they're getting up to speed really quickly. They're great, they're in fulfillment. And they're doing a wonderful job under Jordan's tutelage. Um, but it's not giving me a lot of time to plan a little bit uh, more in advance like I'm used to. So I'm doing literally a lot of things that are kind of off the cuff lately. And so when I pulled this, I actually just pulled this last week for the project. And sometimes when I'm under pressure and I have to work fast, the design actually is a little bit better I think, because I don't have time to agonize over it. I don't know if you guys agonize um, over your designs when you know, you're know you sitting down to your table, but sometimes you just have to go and grab it off the wall or out of your bead boxes or whatever and just jump right in. So, um, so that's what I did with this. So what I, uh, I'm gonna actually move this over to the center camera so I can get a lot closer and I'm gonna trade this over here. So let me get this out of the way and I'll put these guys um, over here so you guys can, if I need to reference them, they're here for you. There we go, straighten that out. There we are. 
Uh, and let me get uh, over here. Okay, so here we go. There we go. The camera is writing itself with the with the lighting. I started on that blue background, so maybe I should grab that. It's always an education up here. We were super bright, so let me get that back there, and let me get this. Okay, there we go. That's better. Um, so I chose some smaller beads that I like, some accent beads. Okay, but when I, I first I went to the wall of our product and literally I looked and I said, what do we have a lot of? Okay, and <laughs> so I grabbed off the, so, you know, because we didn't have time to order a lot of stuff in. So I was like, okay, what do we have a lot of? So I just grabbed off the wall the four millimeter crystal copper rainbow, the four millimeter um, matte gold Apollo, this metallic mix, and this six millimeter, both in six millimeter, the polychrome copper rose. Now you don't have to use all of these, okay? I just grabbed them because I like them. Maybe I wouldn't use, and the way we have it listed, I think we say or, use one of these or one of these, one of these or one of these. So you don't need all of this stuff. Um, but I really dig this metallic mix, so I'm gonna open that up. And then, <clears throat> Um, this four millimeter, maybe I'll use the matte Apollo gold, but all of these work really, really well together. Okay. So that's what I, um, that's what I grabbed. Okay. So then I went over to our wall where we have our, um, tribal and trade beads, right? Andrea was helping me with this and she goes, we haven't used those wood Ashanti saucers in anything. I'm all, all right, well, I guess I better use them. So, and I, I wanted something that are a little smaller than our regular Ashanti. Let me get, let me line them up here. And I love the negative space, the shape that these pull together, you know, when they're all stacked together like this, it makes a really interesting unit. Okay. So that's, so that was my thinking behind this. So I pulled those guys. And then we had a bunch of these, um, the currants in Sun Glow, and I'm loving yellow. Uh, when Brittany comes, she has a yellow, a project in yellows that I think you guys are just going to love, love, love. Sorry, I've got pen all over my hands. That's not pretty. Well, you guys are just going to have to live with it. I don't think I can rub it off. Sorry about that. Anyway, so these in the Sun Glow, I think are really pretty. And so I pulled those guys out. And I thought, yeah, that's looking, let me move that over a little bit so you can see it. That's looking pretty good together, right? Then I thought, well, let's throw in a little more wood or a little something else from Tribal and Trade. So I pulled these guys in. These guys are called No Ending, and it's an ebony wood that has kind of a, a silver plated, um, usually some kind of recycled metal in the center, also an African bead, really cool. All right, so that's those guys there. And these, I'll let you know, the no ending, the size tends to vary a little bit. Sometimes we get them a little bit big, sometimes we get them a little smaller. So it just depends on what is available to us. So you may see them a little bigger, or you may see them, these are a little bit of a, a, a smaller size. But that's just how they are, because they're super handmade. Um, then uh, I went to look at some metal because I thought, you know what, we need some metal in this. And this is a bead that we don't use that often. These guys are called stepping stones. I don't know, maybe we do, but maybe I just kind of forget about them. I don't know, but the hole is nice and large. These are brass, natural brass, and I love using just uncoated, um, you know, unplated kind of interesting metal beads. And so these are called stepping stones and we have them in the brass. Then I thought for fun, we needed a little bit of texture, so that's when I pulled these guys. The shadows in gold plate, the big shadows, right here. And they look nice with those stepping stones, I think. And then I thought, just for fun, because I haven't used it in a while, one of the shadows in what we call the king size, it's the biggest one. So I thought that would make a good um, focal in this. So. You can see how this is starting to shape up this palette. 
But then I thought, well, let's throw some glass. We need some. There's, these are all kind of heavy, though these are still transparent-ish. I needed some transparents uh, in here. So I went over to the Saturns. And these Saturn beads are Czech glass, gorge, super gorgeous in the light Colorado topaz. So I grabbed those, and you can see it's already adding a little lightness to it. And we also had the purple ones. So I said, you know what? Let's get that purple. Um, it's the Saturn in Lavender Opal is what these guys are. And so they're kind of quasi-transparent, I guess I could say. And then I wanted a little more sheen, so I grabbed a large hold pearl in the bronze, I think, is what those guys are. And again, these bronze large hold pearls, they're going to be different shapes, the freshwater pearls. But they have big holes on it, so they'll go really well on your memory wire. Okay. Then I needed a color, right? I needed to kind of focus this because these are all, this is all kind of a neutral palette. Let me put those in there and those in there with the exception of these yellow. Like if I took these yellow currents out, I could put any color current with that palette, right? We've been talking about color palettes the last few weeks on the shows. And so we can really get any color. But I thought, you know, getting back to, um, I thought I had it here. You remember I like to pull it out, Cynthia's color wheel that she painted for us when she was here, Cynthia Thornton of Green Girl. So, um, it, you can see that on this side is a the yellow, then over here on the opposite end of the color spectrum or the color wheel is purple. And so I'd started to pull this purple, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to keep pulling this purple, right? So I was all, Drea, how are we on the purple um, tassels? And she's all, we're great. So I'm all, perfect. I'm going to throw those in, right? And then I needed a seed bead that had a little bit of yellow and a little bit of purple. And this one is the silver lined dark topaz AB. And let me get my hand in there so you can see it. So what that means is this is an A dot seed bead that's silver lined. The glass that it's made of is a dark topaz, like a dark yellow. And the AB coating is kind of purpley. So it it pushed all the right buttons for this, right? So that's what I put in there, okay? And then I needed a couple of charms to kind of go with it. And I like these shooting star charms that we have. And I varied them a little bit. One is gold and one is brass. And that's it. That's how I pulled this palette. Well then, this morning, as I was pulling the samples off the wall, and they're not listed, right? I like to go rogue on this sometimes. And I also wanted to show these pieces, how we did the macrame on here. Um, Janice on this one macrame with the wax linen. So I grabbed some wax linen, um, and we can add them after the broadcast, but I'm going to, I'm going to show you guys the different colors that I pulled and we have got plenty in stock. Um, but here's, this is the plum the four ply wax linen. So you could go if you wanted to add some thread to this, or let's say you didn't want to do memory wire at all and you wanted to string it like on a modified um, Odyssey project that we have, like a float or something. You could just string this up and string it on wax linen, right? I've got the plum, I've got the walnut, which looks cool. Something one that I have never used, but I love the color. I'm going to show you right now. I'm taking it out of this little thing. This is the butterscotch. Look at how pretty that is. And last but not least, the drab olive. So let me show you this all in my hand. So see how, and you can mix all these up. See how Janice did it on this one? how she made that tassel. You could make a multicolored tassel out of all of these. And if there's time, maybe I'll show you how to make this tassel again. It'll be a little bit of a repeat of what we've done before, but, um, but it might be kind of fun. We'll see if we have enough time. But 
right? Look at how cool just these look together. And again, you guys, I'll be honest, I did not give this that much thought. I just went in because time was of the essence. I didn't want to be late on the broadcast, so I just jumped in and I grabbed them right off the wall. So sometimes if you kind of force yourself to do that, to play around and go, you know what? Just jump in, grab some things, see what works for you, and then go from there. But look at that kind of interesting color gradient. You know, the plum, the walnut, the butterscotch, and the drab olive. I like it a lot, okay? So, okay, so let me show you a couple of things. And I know you guys, I think that the macrame has piqued your interest on this. So let me show you how I'd actually start. Here is the memory wire just out of the package, okay? It's like a little slinky. And this is the two inch diameter, I believe. Let me just double check to make sure that it is. Yep, yeah, two inches right there. So the two and a quarter inches is a larger, obviously a larger um, circle, right? So try a little, it's not very expensive. You can try a little bit of both and see, um, you know, see what works for you, okay? And so <clears throat> the way that this, it comes I think in like 12 coils, I don't even know, let me count. Two, four, six, eight, 10, yeah, 12 coils, okay? And at the ends, it used to be that memory wire was so flippin' hard to curl, right? But now it's a little more malleable, thank goodness. So what Janice did here, um, she just created that loop and then she started to string, all right? On this one, I have one I've showed, I don't think it's on this one, this one I also looped and added the little charms on the end. But I have done, maybe it's on this one. Let me see. Yeah, you can see here on the end how there's no loop. And what I did was I just, on the ends before I worked with it, I used zap glue or you could use E6000, whatever. And I just, let's see, two, four, six, about six little beads are glued on the end. And that not that's not going anywhere. Okay, and then that's the same thing, I think, on the opposite. Yeah, the opposite end. You can see that there. And this one that I um, macrameed, this is with 0.5 millimeter leather, is what this one is macrameed with. Okay, so um, So that's this here. And then this one that Janice did, that Janice did, yeah, this is the um, 0.4 uh, Chinese knot and cord, I think is what this one is, okay? So to start, we wanna make sure that you're using the right tool for this, okay? For the cutting of the memory wire, we carry a special tool. Zuron has made a memory wire cutter for years, okay? And I have like some of their first ones that they've made. They last, this is a lifetime tool. And what I love about the memory wire cutter, not only does it cut regular memory wire, but it cuts other wire as well, and it cuts it flush. This isn't memory wire, this is just um, I don't know, 24 gauge bare copper, I think from last week. And I just clip it and it's kind of hard to see on camera, but what this does is it gives it a super nice clean flush cut. And if I'm working with heavy wire, if I'm like forging or doing different things with it, and I have heavy wire like 14 gauge, even 12 gauge I've cut with this, and it just slices it right in half. It's great. So this is a great all-purpose cutter um, and it's really um, vital for you to have this to cut this memory wire because this memory wire has been hardened. So if I use my precious side cutter like this, what you're going to do is you're going to come in and you're going to cut and where the wire has touched the heads of the spool of the of the of the cutter, it's going to leave a perfect little round hole there. 
okay? So don't use these. Don't use your good wire cutters. You want to use either an old random pair that was in your toolbox that you don't care about at all because it'll just mark up the heads or get a nice memory wire cutter like this. I'm going to cut this in half. It'll be a little bit easier for me to work with today. Okay, so I'm going to clip it. I'm just going to come in, see there, and I give it a clip. That's it. All right, so <clears throat> there's a couple of ways as you start to string that you can kind of keep your pieces, your, your piece under control here a little more. I'm going to move this over. And I can start by putting on some tape, and I've just got my tape right here. And I can just get, like I would with Softflex, I get a piece of tape, and I make a little tape flag over the end. Okay, and that's it. Then you can just string and string and string if you want. Something that Janice does, and I think it's a pretty clever idea, you can also get your tape and tape it down like this onto your work surface and see how you can stretch your coil up and start to string with it. So I would just put on, I don't know, whatever it is I'm putting on, right? And the beads just kind of fall right down. I'm going to get, let me get rid of these clips here real quick. And I want to start thinking about how I want to string this. So let me get a little out a little bit so you guys can see that. Let me get rid of this tape dispenser. Okay. And I, I think, um, you know, what I like to do is I like to think about these in chunks, kind of, when I'm stringing it. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut these guys, the six millimeter metallic mix. Look at that. I just love them ever so, right? And then the um, Apollo Gold, matte Apollo Gold, which I also love. Get those down on there. And you could add more metal. I didn't add any like Kishi beads or any spacers or anything else like that. I just added these, um, the stepping stones, which I like a lot. So let me just start on that. I'll do a stepping stone. I like to pattern with this too. So I'm just going to stepping stone, A dot, stepping stone, A dot, and maybe go along for a short period of time doing that patterning and then I'll look at it. The thing that I would advise as you're stringing this along, okay, is just string. Don't overanalyze. Don't think about it too much and just make some pretty patterns. So I've made some pretty patterns with my stepping stones, so now I'm going to put in another little spacer section of these guys. And let me put in a little array, a little grouping of the wood saucers, maybe three of them, okay, like that. And then maybe I'll add a couple more of these, or maybe, maybe I'll do it this way, and a six aught, and maybe three more of those. And the wood beads will probably darken because they are not, um, they're not finished at all. So they'll probably darken a little bit, which I like. And then bring it all the way down, like it's going down the spiral staircase. And I'll do one more of those sections, another one of that metallic mix, and then three more of these. And I think, what do I tell you to use? I'm going to go over here real quick and take a look. I use two packages of the African wood saucers. You can see they're right there. 
Um, and so you'll have plenty to work with. I just wanted to make sure that I should have told you to use two or whatever. Use one and just use fewer, doesn't matter. But see how when I pull it right up, whoops, I pull hit the camera, sorry. I pulled it a little too vigorously. There we go. But when you pull it up, it'll kind of, you know, it'll have everything kind of go down like the little spiral staircase. So can you see here how my patterning is starting to come together? Let me do a couple more and then I know you guys are itching for the macrame. So let me just, I don't know, let me just go for it. I think that these um, ADOT seed beads, to me, at least in this design, they're acting like a little bit of a, I don't know, a little bit of a rest in between patterns maybe. Let me see if I can get this tape down again. I really liked having that. There we go. Stay there. And nope, the, this tape is is not doing what I want it to. So let me get another piece of tape. Oh, the stepping stones aren't in the ingredients list. Okay. I will uh, make sure they get added. Thanks, Gita, for letting me know. Let me double check it. Yep, we'll add them. Sorry, as I'm looking at that list, no problemo. Um, and I just have the tape on, um, on this end for now, and I'll show you what I do with macrame. Okay, so let me add, I've added that other little group of eight right there. Let me add a couple more things. Let me go with some small ones. The four millimeter, maybe a four millimeter, an eight on, a four millimeter, an eight on, a couple more. Now, if you wanted to, with these tassels, see how the tassel, it could go on the end, but it could also just go in the body of the piece. I'm gonna squeeze them in between two A dots. So I'm gonna put that one in, and then another four. Make sure I don't screw up my pattern. <coughs> There we go. Let's take a look. Okay, and let me kind of get those going all the way down. And how many did I do on that side? Two, four. There we go. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so what we've got here, it's starting to shape up a little bit, I think. And I think it might be time for some macrame. I'm going to leave that there for a moment. Let me hold, let me, you guys can see the pattern. So see how it's coming to, starting to come along there? Which I think looks pretty cool. And so, um, let me grab the wax linen and we can decide what color we want to use. I don't know. I like it all. Um, maybe I want something. This is looking to me maybe like it's a little light. So I don't know. That purple is nice. Maybe I want to introduce some green. I think maybe that would show on the camera pretty well. Let me try it. Okay. So the way I set up for the macrame. That's where your friend and mine, the clampers, come into play. So I'm going to hold this. I'm going to grab my clamper. And I'm going to kind of put it there on my beads. And I'm going to get my other one. I'm going to kind of isolate it there. <clears throat> and I'm going to tape everything down. So 
so it holds. And it's a little fiddly, but you know. Whoops, am I in that? Let me make sure I'm in the shot. I didn't even check it. And it doesn't, it's a good question Cheryl has, does the memory wire lose its shape when you're working with it? And I have not had that experience, Cheryl. It's pretty, um, it's a pretty hard wire, so it really kind of stays, stays where you put it. I'll put another piece of tape over here. Right, I know Janice is saying she goes through buckets of tape. I do too. I just found that tape is pretty easy to deal with. There we go. So see how I've kind of isolated my little space right there? It's not really in the middle of the camera. Let me see if I can move it over. Okay, there we go. Maybe I have just way too much tape on this side. Let me take all this off and I'm going to just cut this down just a little bit. There we go. That's a little more manageable. And Cindy Brooke is saying that she's made hoop earrings with one full circle of memory wire. I've been thinking about that too, Cindy. I love, there we go, that's better. I love hoops. I love, 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 love them so much that I, um, and I have used memory wire to make hoops. I love them. I'm going to cut, I'm just going to do a shorter piece. I'm going to cut maybe like 18 inches of wax linen. This is the four ply, but again, you could use leather, 0.5 millimeter leather or um, 0.4 millimeter Chinese knotting cord, whatever works for you. Okay. So now, Here's this, all right? So now I'm just gonna, let's just go for it. I can, I'm not gonna do it um, uh, too tightly. I'm gonna have it be nice and firm, but I wanna be able to kind of move it down a little bit. Okay, sorry, I hit the camera there, okay? So I'm just gonna come in and I'm just gonna start to macrame like I would normally. There's my strand. Here's kind of my left-hand side over here. I'm kind of at an angle. Here's my right hand side over here. And I'm just gonna come in and I'm just gonna start with my P side here. See at the beginning how I've kind of made that loop for the P and that strand goes over the memory wire. Then I go underneath that leg of the P, under the memory wire and tighten it down. And there's my first knot. Now not too tight, just firm, okay? So now I'm going to go to the Q side. Oh, did you hear that? There's little Casper. Somebody's barking. And his name is Casper the little white dog. There we go. So see how that's starting to come up? So I'm going to just do some macrame here, back and forth from the P side to the Q side. Like so. The nice flat double half hitch knot, the P and the Q. Yeah, I'll revisit. I will do a free tip Friday for earrings um, because it's summer, you guys. We've all got to wear our hoops. And all of you guys have been so uh, very kind with your comments on my short haircut. It is perfect for um, earring weather, you know earring time. Show off those earrings. So I'll, I'll revisit it. We'll make some memory wire hoop earrings and we will wear giant hoops. I don't know about you guys but I was a teen in the 80s and I was all about a big hoop. I still am. I love my big swingy hoops. So see how I'm just coming in and it's building up pretty quickly. Okay, everybody so wants to see Casper. Maybe I can get Karen to bring him in. He's super cute, maybe at the end, we'll see. He's such a sweet little dog. And when he and Alfie are here together, there's a little white dog and a big black cat and they chase and chase. It's amazing we get any orders out to you guys at all. 
We're too busy playing with our pets. So continue to memory wire until you're done or until you want to, or until you, macrame, until you want to, uh, to continue. And I'll do the twist. I know you guys are asking about the twist, so I'll do the twist in a second. So, um, let me get another, I, I, I really dig the, um, the big shadows. So I'm going to put a big shadow bead on. Let me go ahead and move this down now. See how it just kind of goes down like a bead. Let me untape it. There we go. I'm going to push it down so it's in the right place. And I don't want to push it down too vigorously because I don't want to smash the, um, you know, compact, I guess, the macrame too much. But there it is. You see, I've moved it down and everything's nice and tight and ready. And so I'm going to put on my, maybe I'll do this. I'm going to put on a, one of these guys the big shadow. Just pull it out, you know, expand it out if you're having trouble getting it down. And then what I'm going to do, I'm not going to have the memory wire go around this since the hole in the big shadow is so big, hence the name big shadow. I'm just going to put the thread through it and I'll continue on. Let me just make another um, macrame section there. I love you and you're my nemesis all at the same time. So I'm just going to pull that off so I don't screw with it too much. And put a fresh tape. Put that down. Tape it. And once I've gotten it started like this, I don't have to um, I don't pull on it too much. I can kind of let the clampers go. So I'm going to tape it. Sorry, I'm not in the frame. I'm going to tape it just like that. There we go. So I've got space. That's kind of the secret of getting the macrame to work. Okay, there we go. Maybe I will. I'll put that little clamp so it kind of holds it off the table maybe. There we go. And I'll just continue to macrame. So I'm going to go kind of at speed, kind of go a little bit faster. So I cut about, I don't know, anyone remember, about 18 inches, I guess, of cord here. But if I had to add it, more cord, if I were doing a longer piece and I kind of ran out, I could always add it underneath a bead that had a large hole, right? And you could do more of this, I think, like I did here with this one with the um, leather. I did it Bollywood style around the outside here, and those A dots fit, at least these did, I think they should, on the 0.5 millimeter leather. And I also went around, you can see I, how I grouped them like that. That's a fun pattern. Um, and then I think these were six aughts, but I strung them on the memory wire and went around them that way. So there's a lot of variation, you know, just use your imagination. Just, you know, put the beads on until you want to change it up. And I used the um, wax linen today because, I don't know, I wanted it to kind of have this natural feel. But the leather would also look great on this. The Distress Brown, the Distress Green, we carry the 0.5 millimeter leather in a lot of colors. My only caution to you when you are macrame with the leather is, and, and we quality control it before we send it out to you. We make sure it doesn't have any knots. Um, but when you're working with it, just double check to make sure that there's no little flaw that's going to make it break on you. Um, and just, you know, use some shorter pieces 
um, so it doesn't break. But if it breaks, just slide a bead up to it, glue it, and then just move on to something else. It's okay. So that looks almost even. Let me see. That's about right. Now the way to end this is I can just come in and I'll add some hypo cement. So before I do my last little closure, okay, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add a little bit of hypo there. And I will continue my macrame. So see how that hypo cement just went right in to the knot and I'll do it one more time because there's a little more hypo there. I'm going to get my pull it out just a little. Let me get nice and tight so you guys can see that. There we go. See that? There you go, just like that. Okay, and I might add one more. There we are. And that's it. Okay. And we'll tighten it up. And I'll let that sit. I don't know, until it's set and nice. And then, uh, and now I'll just continue to, um, to string. Melanie had a question about spindles. Uh, could you throw spindles in the project? You can't really because spindles are too long and they won't make this curve. So you could wire wrap spindles though and drop them along here like um, charms or whatever. That would look pretty cool. But um, a, a negative on the spindle beads. Let me do this, and let me put a few more on here. And here, so I'm going to use these sun, these currents in sun glow. And maybe I will put the no ending in between them. I don't know. Let me see. I'm going to get that one to go down. Yeah, I don't mind that. Maybe I'll put three of the currents and two of these no ending. Now these no ending, or rather the currents, let me have them go down. The currents have kind of big holes-ish, so I'm going to butt up another um, grouping of the seed beads here. I also want you guys to notice, see that, how the way these are lining up? I don't want both of my big sections of beads to actually hit each other like this. Whoops, I took this off the tape, didn't I? Did you guys see that? How it pulled right out? Let me push that back. Let me put a few more beads on there, and I'm going to put a loop on the end. I'm playing with fire this way. So let me just do that. It's a good time to show you a loop anyway. I think I've had a few, maybe this many, I don't know. But before we have any other um, mishaps, I'm going to get my round nose plier. And with memory wire, the memory wire has a curve to it, right? So I don't know where my other section of memory wire went. Looking around for it, I don't see it. But the memory wire it has a curve right like this. So when I make the loop on the end, I want to make it towards that curve, that curve, not against the curve because it will be almost impossible to loop it. So oh, it's right here, it's sitting right here. Okay. So I'm going to do it on this piece first so you guys could see it. It'll be a little bit easier for you to see. So here's the end, my end, and I'm going to grab with my round nose plier and I'm just going to form the wire around the head of that tool. It's stiff wire, so it takes a little bit of doing, right? A little bit of hand strength. But watch what I do here. I pull, pull
pull it around and I give myself a little curve so it kind of sits on top of itself so there's no opening there. If there's an opening, your beads are going to come down into it. So it's one of the few times that I kind of, when I make a loop, I just want to make sure that there's a little bit of overlap there. I'm going to get my chain nose plier to kind of poke that in so it's curved and not sticky. And I'm going to continue that wrap just a little bit more. So see what I've got? See how it doubles over? But this will prevent beads from falling in here. Okay? So I'm just going to kind of close it up. Now this is ready for um, for your loop, for your whatever tassel or whatever you want to put on the end. So let me do that same thing to this one so nothing falls off, so it doesn't all end in, in tears there. So loop it around. And this is probably how I'd start. If I knew that I was going to put a, um, there we go. If I knew I was going to put a tassel or a charm or something on the end, I'd go ahead and do that first. And then I wouldn't, it wouldn't fall off. And then I'd be able to tape this. So yeah, don't go against the loop because you're going to be struggling and that loop will never fully close. So just continue that looping around. Um, and again, if you wanted to glue a bead on the end, you could use like a little stopper, right? Any of these could be a memory wire stopper, right? You would just bring it in. I'll do it on this end. I won't glue it, but I just bring it in on this end and I'll put some zap on the tip and I'll line up a couple of beads, like maybe one four mil, and as it slides up the zap, it'll grab the glue and this one here. And then I'll just kind of hold it in place. Let the zap maybe hold it for about a minute. Let the zap kind of grab those beads on, right? And then um, just let it sit. And then once it's, I don't know, maybe about 10 or 15 minutes, then it'll be um, hard. It won't be cured, but it'll be hard enough for you to to continue your stringing with. Okay, so that's how I do that. Um, so we'll just continue. I'm going to actually, I don't like how these are lining up, so I will just take these off. And you can see since I didn't do this project beforehand, this is when I'm designing, I would have gone, nope, that doesn't really work. So I'm gonna take these guys off. Easy enough though, Right, and the memory wire is pretty buoyant, so you just want to try and control it a little bit. I'm going to put on, um, it's time though for a say something bead, so I'm going to put on one of those uh, pearls, I think, maybe a couple more of these four mils, maybe like this. Just string, let your fingers find a little pattern. When it's all said and done around your wrist, it's not going to make that much difference. So sometimes it's a little nerve wracking though. You're like, oh, I just want to throw beads on, but then you start to hyper analyze things, right? And you're like, that doesn't look right, or I don't know, whatever. Just let it go. It's only memory wire, and it's so easy to unstring on memory wire. So just give yourself permission to experiment with your beads to see how they look. My only caution is when you're rounding that corner is to try and not have your big beads on each row but up against each other. And then one final, I think I tell you that I used three of these. So there's three right there. Okay, and I'll just swing them around. Let's see how it looks. Come on, go down there. Great, so now I'm over here at the other side or getting close to the other side. I'll put a few more beads on and then I will string those, this grouping that I took off. Okay. Yeah, the yellow beads I think were kind of a bold choice on this, but you know, I, I'm trying to break out of my color rut. 
So, you know, and who cares? If it doesn't work, if you don't love it, just take it off and put put something else on. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go for these yellow beads. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of yellow. This on this guy. And then I think I finished it with a um one of these stepping stones. So this um, wax linen that I'm using is kind of that tail. There we go. Look at that. That tail is kind of getting in my way now, and it looks like the glue has set. So I'm just going to come in, and I'm going to clip it so it doesn't give me any issues. Now, spiral. I think you guys wanted to see spiral, right? I think that's the... Though I don't want my macrame to line up, so I want, if I'm doing it, I need to string so I get kind of maybe over here so it's not lining up against each other. Or it can, if you like it that way. But let me just put on a bunch of 11 knots here and get to the other side. So kind of think about, as you're designing this, maybe think about what you're stringing on like in quadrants, right? Like if here's your circle and you're thinking about, oh, I'm stringing this half, so this half needs to be different, and then this half needs to be different, so things don't line up all together, maybe? I don't know. It's kind of here. Yeah, Paulette's saying she needs to be in a certain mood to work with memory wire because it's fidgety. It is kind of fidgety, but the more uh, beads you put on, see how now I have about two rounds on here? Um, it's a little easier to control because I have a little more, um, there's a few more on here. So it kind of tames it a little bit. Let me put on another pattern. Uh, a metallic mix, a Saturn, another A dot, another metallic mix. Let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, look at, I like the way that looks. Get that down there. There you go. Let's see, almost to where I wanna be for my macrame. So let me put on a few more of these 11 knots and then we'll be ready. Okay. Or sorry, the 8 knots, not 11s. 8 knots are perfect, I think, for memory wire. It's the perfect size. And if you're watching this live, um, not later on, a few months down the road, we just launched some brand new colors. Those of you who loved my tea rose mix that I did as a little mini mix, um, we just added all of those colors, that kind of willow and the, there's that kind of funky muted magenta-y color. There's all kinds of colors. So if you go to the Just In section of our website, you'll see all of those bad boys in there. And they're really, um, they're really great. And we're carrying them all in eight dots, six, eight, and 11. So you'll be able to play around with those. Okay, so see how, and I've also kind of bookended that little design that I've made with the stepping stones. Okay, so uh, now it's time for another section of macrame. So shall we? I think we shall. Uh, let me get... Let me get my little clamper. There we go. Sometimes I do it this way too. Now that I've got beads on here, I can kind of clamp them a little bit. Oops, but I want this coil on the other side. There we go. Your friend and mine, the tape. I need a space to work. I need a, a, a space to macrame, right? And I want this actually to be the top portion. So let me see if I can just kind of clamp over it. Nope. Paulette, what, <laughs> what were you saying? You got to be in the right mood to work with this persnickety memory wire. Sorry about that. Let me fumble a little bit here. Let me clip this there. I'm going to take this out. I just need a little space to macrame on, kids. Just a little space. Doesn't help that I've got all of you watching me, huh? There we 
come and go. Tape that guy down. Tape all those, plant all those together. There we go. I've got a little space <clears throat> right there that I'm going to macrame around. Now remember, it doesn't have to be all right exactly um, in the place that you're going to macrame because you can push it to where you want it to go. There we go. Sort of ish. I'll work around it. Who's the boss of this memory wire? Me. So what's Janet saying? If I have a design board, I can use the clampers, one on each side, and pull the wire apart. I could. I don't know. I need maybe something a little more shallow. But I'm going to go with this kind of pile. Because, right, sometimes we just work off the cuff, and you just have to make it work. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut another 18 inches of this um, wax linen. And I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to go for it with another piece of tape over there. Tape that down. There we go. Stay where I put you. So, <clears throat> and sometimes these little clampers, if I turn them, it'll lift. So that's where I've got my little place to macrame under. So now you just pick a side. Pick a side, any side that you like. And you are just going to, I'm going to actually make my loops on this side so I'm not running into this. So I'm going to just continually macrame with the loop on my right hand side or I've made the P shaped loop. Okay, so I'm just going to continue. And if I just keep going in this same direction, that macrame is going to spiral. See, you can see it spiraling already. Let me get a little tighter so you guys can see it. That's a little too tight. <laughs> there we go, that's better. So keep going on that, that P side. The loop is towards my right hand. And you just continue it the same way and it just starts to curl. So see, here's that loop over the leg of the loop and underneath the wire. Keep it going, kids. Keep it going. And if you have to free it up to reposition, but it's it's minding its business here. I think it's doing okay. Just sometimes it's a little fiddly, but that's just how it is. But see, this clamper gives me a little bit of space, lifts my memory wire up and off of my table surface. And then before I get too far, you know, if you wanted to add beads or whatever, you could do that at this point. But see how the I'm not changing my orientation at all. The, the macrame is just making a swivel around. Okay. Yeah, the white olive um, A dot, that's one of my favorites. I'm going to tell you, I want to go, do I have the site up? Let me see. I want to just look real quick in Just In because there is one that I am so wild for. It's under New Arrivals, not Just In. My favorite, favorite, favorite one is the Matte Opaque Light Olive Luster. That's my favorite one. I love it so much. Um, but they're all so super delicious. So if you go to the new arrivals tab, um, if you're watching this live or in the week or so after, um, you'll find them all there. So see how I can just bring this right to where I want it. I'm going to take all these clamps off, all this tape off. There we go. 
and just make sure that it's kind of nice and tight and then you can just continue on with your macrame here and you don't want to compact it down too much you don't want the wax line to smush down so much so you just want to make sure it's it's a nice macrame okay so <clears throat> To close it, now I know on Janice's here, this guy here, let me widen this up a little close. She used tassels on the ends. And I know that we did have a little bit of time, and I said if there was time I'd show you. So let me show you this guy. It's so super easy, and it's great to do it with leftovers. So I'm just going to... Um, get my my tassel ready to go. And you guys already know how to do this. You just maybe don't realize that you do. It's super, super easy. And it involves your friend and mine, the silk wrap, okay? So I'm gonna start out with a, um, a jump ring. And you can see I store my jump rings in our little storage and I just, um, you know, label them all so I know what's what. Since my memory wire is copper, I'll use the copper, and you can use a four millimeter jump or a five millimeter jump ring or a six millimeter. I'm going to use a six millimeter because it's a little bit bigger, um, and I'm going to make it a little bit uh, larger there. Um, and so I'm just going to come in. And how many legs did Janice do? Two, four, six, eight, ten. I think. Two, four, six, eight. 10, 12. So that means I'm going to cut six lengths. Let me get a little bit wider here. Six lengths of um, wax linen. And I'm going to make them a little longer than I might normally, just so you guys can see it. Let me see how long those are. Maybe I'll make them about, about six inches. I don't think I need them quite that long. Maybe five inches, five and a half maybe will work. Okay, and so I'm gonna make six of these lengths. That's four, that's five, and that's six. And I'll clip it, get all this out of the way. And I wanna make sure that my jump ring is completely closed before I go any further. So I'm gonna get my two cutters, or my two chain nose pliers, close it up. And uh, let's get this cord through. And notice how I haven't cut the tails or anything yet just makes it easier to get it all through the cord. I'll bring it down. And I'm going to silk wrap. So we'll get another little length. I don't know, another five inch piece or something. There's my scissors. And I will get my loop. And I'll do about one third to about two thirds of the thread. I want to make sure that everything is looped nice and even, that things aren't too twisted. Get a little tighter in here so you can see it. And then I'm going to wrap from underneath the loop to make sure I get it nice and tight down towards the legs of the tassel. Okay, and I'll just wrap. My first wrap gives me enough room so there's movement on this tassel, but not so long that it doesn't look right. And it's so easy to silk wrap with wax linen. Could not be easier because everything stays where you put it. We have a great skill builder, one of our first ones on our YouTube channel, a great skill builder on how to do this silk wrap. It's a real beadshop.com staple. So then with that little end, I'm going to tuck it into the loop. And then remember this uh, from the other end of the, the thread, that loop. 
I pull it through, I pull, 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 and as that loop gets smaller, it's going to pull the rest of that cord through, and it's going to live. I pull it so it lives right in the middle of this silk wrap here. And with wax linen, what I like to do is sometimes I'll take my two chain nose, because since it's waxed, it's a little hard for me to grab onto, and I'll pull both, kind of like this. See that? Now that um, that's nice and tucked in there, nice and tight, and I'll come in, and I'll clip all this away this short one away and then I'll open up these loops like so. Now you're ready you can see in the tassel that Janice made they're all different lengths so um, I'm just gonna she used Padres for this but I'll use a dots and it's waxed, so I don't need a needle. I'll just kind of stiffen the end with my fingers. And maybe for to make it a little bit different, I'll put three on there. And I'll slide those up. And I don't really need to worry about where I'm going to tie the knot. I know that I vaguely want this tassel to be a little bit shorter. So I'll kind of I'll make that overhand loop. And as I tighten it down, I'm going to tighten it, but I'm going to make sure that the knot is big enough, and it is. This A dot's not going to slide over it. So there's one, and we'll just keep putting them on. And you don't have to do three beads. I could just do two, and they your knot doesn't have to be even, right? They don't have to all be at the same length. So maybe that one's a little bit longer. I'll grab another. If it's not stiff enough, pull that wax down to stiffen the end and string them on. Okay, and then just tie your knot there, and then you can start to kind of see where you want that knot to sit. and just keep grabbing the tassel legs until they're all strung up. That one went on. This one doesn't want to. Persnickety. There we go. And then just that overhand knot. Make a loop. Pull that tail through. And then see, you can kind of start to see where you want that knot to hit. So maybe about right there. So you can see I've added beads on some, and I'll just continue on with those other ones. Easy peasy. I won't finish it now, but you get the idea. And then when I clip the ends away, the wax is really going to hold this. You could put a dot of glue on there, but I'm not going to. Um, I leave a little bit just as a design decision. I'll leave just a little bit of wax linen below there just like that okay and once you do all of these guys these will be ready to go okay ta-da that's it that's how to do that and then you will just attach it where's my bracelet you could open up this jump ring and attach it onto the end, or you could attach it with another jump ring. At this point, since I've put this on like this, I've used a six millimeter. I might go ahead and grab a four mil or a five millimeter rather jump ring and attach it on that way. it up, put it on, and 
and close it up nice and tight. Okay. And that's it. So that's ready. So you can continue. I'll continue with some more macrame. I'll continue um, stringing more of these beads on. But that's that's all she wrote. And again, remember with this one, I also have my little star. So I think I'll put the star on this too. And when we send you these charms, they have little jump rings on them. So I'm going to grab whatever I have here. Maybe I'll use the brass one because it'll match the jump ring that I have sitting here. Let's see, I think I want the smaller one. There we go, that's better. And we'll just add that. I want to add it onto there. So let me do that. And I, I like all these colors together. It's kind of joyful. We need some joyfulness. Makes me happy. And it's a nice color combo. Makes me think of sunny skies. Which is why I named it Sunshade. Kind of has some sun and some darker colors in it. So that's it. You can see that little, look how cute that little tassel and the star look together on that end. I think it's fun. Okay. Um, so yeah, so you can use for the macrame, and Cheryl had this question. Um, I'll just reiterate it real quick. You can use whatever you like for those macrame sections, right? We could use like this, the wax linen that I had here. Let me widen this camera up a little bit so we can all see it, okay? And then um, let me get this kind of out of the way here. So the wax linen like we've used here, this one I use the 0.5 millimeter leather which I liked a lot. And then this one that Janice used, did, she used the 0.4 millimeter Chinese knotting cord, which I like a lot too. So it just depends on, on what it is you like to use. Remember, you do need a memory wire cutter. Super important. You don't want to use your nice side cutters like your friend, the Zeron side cutter, because you're going to damage the heads the blades of your tool, the jaws of your cutter. So um, you don't want to do that because once that little um, piece has been cut with those, um, the, the metal is removed from the head of your tool. It's very difficult to um, defile that out or rehone it to get it to work again nicely. Okay, so that really is it, you guys. There's no... Um, I don't know, it's it's pretty simple, you know, just the the order of the day for this is to kind of play around with your memory wire to see what works for you. Now remember when I cut these down, these here, this one and this one that Janice did, she used all 12 uh, coils. What I did here for this one for ease of stringing and stuff as well, I cut this one in half. So it's six and six. Really easy to stack. So, you know, if you want to use the, the, the six and six, it might be a little bit easier for you to navigate. Also really easy to, to, to stack up with like your wrap bracelets or whatever else it is you're making. So, you know, try a variety of the wax linen. I'll um, add the wax linen that I used into the project and I know I also have to add the stepping stones into the project but this is everything if you go right to beadshop.com you will see a listing of everything all of the uh, ingredients that we use for this and this really is a great one for you to play around with what I like to call stash diving and go into some of your um, you know, into your bead boxes and grab some things that you think might work out for you nicely and then add it. You know, you can always supplement it with some fun new pieces like we have here at Bead Shop. So that's it. Easy, easy, easy. Um, I did want to mention you guys right uh, off the bat. Let me pull 
um, let me get my I'm gonna get my phone here uh, before I sign off I did want to mention if you have gotten your email uh, your newsletter in your email every morning uh, we uh, pop an email newsletter into your box and it has info on what's shaken with us here at beadshop.com um, so today is Wednesday March 4th and we are taking 25% on many of the ingredients that we're using in today's project including memory wire check glass, tribal beads, charms, and tassels. If you use the coupon code FUN25 at checkout, it's good until tonight, 3, 4, 20 at midnight Pacific time. You will get 25% off of most of the items that I am using in this piece, okay? All of those um, products all of those categories are 25% off. I also wanted to mention you guys over at beadshop.com. Of course, if you go to beadshop.com, you'll get information on all of the product and the project from today's broadcast. Uh, this is, March is, and I don't know if you've been following our Insta, you guys, Jordan is wrangling things over on our Instagram between Jordan and Drea, and it looks just great. There was a countdown to our monthly mix that you guys saw that I'm going to be working with on Friday, um, Jordan's Secura Skies mix. I have a great project for you lined up for Friday with that. Um, but you've also seen that March is National Craft Month. And Jordan made a really cool little um, little uh, uh, logo that we're using. So I want you to make sure to go over to beadshop.com and sign up for our newsletter because we have stuff that is dropping this month in honor of National Craft Month that you're not going to want to miss. So um, do it. Jump over beadshop.com. Sign up for the newsletter. We'd love to have you over there. Also, we really, really appreciate your shares and your likes um, and your follows. If you haven't followed our YouTube channel, please do. Um, we would love to uh, have you over there. So give it a follow and you'll never miss any of the content that we upload onto our YouTube channel. Um, our Instagram, I have little Instagram TV, IGTV special videos that I do over there. So give us a follow on Insta at beadshop.com. And of course, you can go to Facebook and join our private Facebook group that's called The Bead Table. If you search beadshop.com, bead table over on Facebook, you'll find it. So that is it. We got through another fun Wednesday here at beadshop.com with our Bead Shop Live. I'll be back on Friday with a great project that mixes Secura Skies, Jordan's wonderful um, March mix, our monthly mix for March, and wire, and it's coming in together, and I think you guys will really, really like it. I'm way over at the side. Let me move myself over a little bit. Let me move myself over a little bit that way. There we go. You can see the light, but I don't care. Um, alrighty, so thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for your likes, your loves, and your shares. I will see you Friday for Free Tip Friday. Stay creative, you guys. Open those newsletters, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. I'll flash that at the very end, and I'll see all you all on Friday.